Hey guys, welcome to the 147th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to force a user to do something uh, with a control. So, for example, if there's already text in the text box, then the user deletes all that text, then you're going to want to tell the user that they must provide text in that text box. So, for this tutorial, you're just going to need to have two text boxes. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is basically have text already in one of the text boxes. So I'm just going to make it say Adam. And then we're going to want to go over to the events and go down to uh, leave. And this event will basically occur when the user uh, selects a different control. So let's just go ahead and click on this right here. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is check to see if the user actually did delete all that text. So we're going to say if textbox one's text equals nothing, then we know that the user did in fact delete all of the text in the text box. So then we're just going to tell the user that they must provide a name. So we're going to say message box show you must provide a name. And then we're going to want to go ahead and use the select method. And the select method will basically bring the user's attention back to the control and it will put the user's cursor inside of the text box so that they can actually um, type in a name. So we're just going to say textbox1.select. Alright, so now we need to debug here, and since we didn't delete all this text in here and click away, it's fine. But if we delete all that text and click in this text box, then you must provide a name. Now obviously this isn't perfect, because if we put like a space here and then click away, it's fine, but you can obviously run more checks and replace all the spaces with nothing or something like that. Alright, and this method will basically work with any control. So let's say you had, I don't know, a combo box, and in your combo box you had a few different items. But the first item was basically just a label telling the user what is in the combo box. So if it just said like country as the first item, you don't obviously want anyone to be able to select this item. And then under, if we had like a few countries like US, UK, and Canada, then all right. And then you want to force the users to be able to pick, uh, or to have to pick one of these countries right here. So what we're going to want to do is just go down to the leave method again and check to see if the user didn't select a country. So we're going to say if um, combo box ones selected index equals zero, then we're just going to have a message box show saying that they must select a country. So we're going to say, you must select a country. And then we're just going to want to again use that select method to bring the user's attention back to that combo box. So we're going to say, combo box one dot select. And right up here, while the form is loading or before it loads, um, we're just going to want to set the combo box's selected index to zero because if you don't do that, it'll be set to negative one, meaning there will be nothing in the combo box like you can see right now. And we want it to say country when it loads. So we're just going to say combo box one dot selected index equals zero. So it'll equal that uh, country item. So yep, now we see it says country right there. Now, since we selected country and try to click away, it won't let us. It'll say you must select a country, and then when we click OK, you see it highlights that country again since we use the select method. So now if we were to select an actual country like US, it's fine. If we select Canada or something, it's fine. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial on how to force a user to do something with a control. So, see you guys.